Rhoda from Made In. Today I'll be making a roast chicken with vegetables. This is the coziest recipe ever. I don't think there's anything cozier than a roast chicken. It has a beautifully browned chicken with a homemade poultry rub that sits atop some vegetables and the aromatics in the pot will flavor the chicken and the chicken juices will flavor the vegetables. It's all gonna come together in our made in seven and a half quart oval Dutch oven. And it's just the most delicious dish you can imagine. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is make a homemade poultry seasoning or spice rub for the chicken. I'm gonna start with some salt, good amount of salt. I'm adding pepper. I have onion powder, sweet paprika, rosemary, some thyme, and this is ground sage. And a lot of poultry seasonings can vary, but this is kind of has all of the herbs and spices that I really like for chicken. If you don't wanna make this yourself, you could absolutely buy poultry seasoning and just mix it with the salt and pepper. The first thing I'm gonna do with the chicken is pat it dry. You want the skin to be really dry so the spice rub can stick. This is about a four to four and a half pound chicken and I've removed the giblets and other things that were inside the chicken. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is gonna cut out the wishbone. I'm just gonna help carving much easier at the end. Future you will thank you. The wishbone is kind of a upside down V-shaped bone that runs along both sides of the top of the breast, kind of on either side of the neck bone. Feel, you can kind of feel it through the flesh. You're gonna cut an incision down both sides and then just kind of use your paring knife to work that bone out of the flesh. And then once you get to the top and you've loosened the, the two bones along the side, you're gonna twist it and remove the wishbone. If you're having trouble removing the wishbone, can't find it, don't wanna do it, it's fine, you can just skip this part. The only reason why I'm doing it is it makes it a little easier to carve in the end. I'm going to rub some olive oil all over the chicken, and that's gonna help the spice rub stick and also help it from burning once I start to brown it in the Dutch oven. Okay, so I'm gonna put some of the spice rub inside, which will help season it from within. I'm gonna put a little bit on the back, which doesn't get as much love as the breast side, but it's all going in there together. I'm just trying to coat this completely this is a generous amount of spice rub, but I am gonna be browning the chicken in the Dutch oven, so some of it's gonna come off, which is totally fine. I just wanna make sure it's really well seasoned right now. Now I'm gonna stuff the cavity of the bird. I have one lemon here that's been cut in half. It's gonna go inside. And then I'm just gonna use a few sprigs of my herbs here. I'm gonna do a really simple, easy truss, which is just tying the legs together. If you want to, you could do this, you know, the French way, we're kind of binding it all the way around, but I'd, I think it's just fine just to kind of do the quick and easy way. So I'm just gonna cross the drumsticks like that. Just gonna tie a nice tight knot. That's gonna help keep the shape while I'm browning it in the Dutch oven. I'm gonna tuck the wings back behind, almost like she's sunbathing, just resting on the beach. All right, this baby's all rubbed up and ready to go. I'm gonna put it in the fridge to do its thing overnight. And now I'm gonna get all the vegetables ready. First up, we have fennel. I'm gonna cut the fronds off and save these to garnish later. What I'm going for here is basically everything to be about the same size so that everything can cook evenly in the pot along with the chicken. So I'm gonna cut this into quarters and cut out the core. Okay, and I want these to be about an inch size wedge. This recipe, is inspired by a classic French dish called poulet roti grammaire, which means roast chicken grandma style. This dish is really significant to me because as a young student at the French Culinary Institute in New York City, this is one of the first dishes that I made that really resonated with me. It was so cozy and friendly and comforting that you know it felt like a grandma's hug, that I felt like, okay, not all French food is this daunting, unapproachable, you know, fancy food. Some of it is really cozy and it made me feel like, okay, I can do this. I can cook French food and you can too. Okay, now I'm gonna do a fun little roll cut here. I want these to be about two inch pieces. So I've cut my first cut and then I'm gonna turn it, cut it again, turn it, cut it again. And now I'm getting up to the top, which is pretty thick. Any places where you have bigger pieces, you can just cut those in half. This top is pretty big, so I'm gonna cut it into quarters. Just basically playing into the fact that this dish is rustic and homey. It's not, doesn't have to be perfect. Really just want all of the vegetables to be about the same size. Now we're gonna move on to the red onion. 
And again, just like the fennel, I'm gonna cut this into about one inch wedges. I'm gonna cut the tops of the garlic off so that it can expose the top of the clove and this is gonna roast in the pot along with the chicken and vegetables. Later, when this is nice and roasty, I'm gonna squeeze it over some toast. It's gonna be amazing. We have our vegetables. I also have these potatoes here, which are just the cutest little potatoes you've ever seen. Um, if you have potatoes that are bigger than about an inch and a half, you can cut them in half, and if they're even bigger, you can cut them into quarters. Again, you're just trying to make everything be about the same size. Last step is I'm going to add a little bit of oil, just so that these vegetables don't burn. And I'm gonna add some more thyme and rosemary. Now I'm gonna add salt and pepper. Okay, our vegetables are all prepped and we're gonna move over to the Dutch oven. I'm turning this on to medium, medium low. And one of the key steps in this recipe is to properly brown your chicken. You don't wanna do it over too high of a heat. I don't wanna burn my spice rub. I love this larger size oval Dutch oven. It's the perfect shape to brown the chicken in, which is the key step to this recipe. This is enamel cast iron, so it has the wonderful heat retention and even heating of cast iron, but it has a great enamel finish, so it's very easy to care for, and the chicken will definitely not stick to this. I let this chicken sit with the spice rub in the fridge overnight, so I've brought it back to room temperature. Okay, I can tell this Dutch oven is hot enough by holding my hand over it. And you know, I'm not going for a really high heat here. I don't wanna burn my spice rub. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil and then just start to brown. And I will be browning it on all sides. I'm gonna start with the side, um, trying to get the, the leg and the side of the breast first. I just wanna get some nice browning all over the skin. Uh, this is gonna take you know a good 15 to 20 minutes, so don't rush it. Definitely adjust the heat if it seems like it's burning. And you can push this up against the walls of the Dutch oven to help with the browning. Got this at a medium, medium low, and I'm kind of playing with the temperature, but the, the enamel cast iron has really nice even heating all the way across, even though it's this oval shape. Um, there's no hot spots or, or cool spots on it, and it's really doing a nice job of browning this evenly. So really what I'm doing here is jump-starting the chicken cooking process. I'm building up some browning, which helps with that mayo reaction for flavor and I'm also rendering some of the fat out of the skin. So if you just put this in the pot raw with the top on it, you wouldn't end up with very much browning. It wouldn't have as much flavor and the skin wouldn't have as much fat rendered. I'm using spoons and kind of my hands because I'm worried that tongs might tear the skin. If this is totally freaking you out, you can absolutely use cut up chicken. You could cut a whole chicken into eight pieces and use tongs to turn it. You could use chicken legs or chicken thighs. You just might have to adjust your final roasting time a little bit. It might not take quite as long as a whole chicken. All right, I think this is pretty well browned. I'm just gonna scoop this up and transfer it over here and turn my heat off. If you have some black burnt bits in your Dutch oven, maybe your heat got a little bit hot, it's fine. You could use a paper towel to wipe some of those out. Mine look fine to me, so I'm just gonna add some butter. And now I'm gonna add my vegetables and toss them to coat. So we've got my potatoes and everything else. We have the garlic, the fennel, the onions, the carrot, the parsnip, thyme and rosemary. And I'm gonna just toss these, the butter and oil. This wouldn't be a French recipe without a little wine. So I'm just gonna add about a quarter cup or so, and that'll just provide a little bit of liquid to really create a steam roast environment. Okay, the chicken's going back in the pot. Don't be scared. Okay, so everything's in the pot. The cool thing about the enamel cast iron, we have this really cool lid that I'm gonna put on top. It's, we call it the cloud cover lid. It has these dimples that help to actually baste whatever you're cooking in the Dutch oven. So the condensation will collect on these, these cute little dimples and drip back into the pot, basting the chicken as it roasts. Okay, the Dutch oven is going in to roast at 400 degrees for 40 minutes. All right, it's been 40 minutes and it's time to check on the chicken. What we have here is an almost cooked chicken. You can see that there is a magical sauce that has formed at the bottom of this Dutch oven. So I'm gonna use that to baste the chicken a little bit. That is a combination of that white wine, the butter, the chicken fat, and it just looks beautiful. I'm also basting the vegetables a little bit. I'm gonna increase the heat to 425. 
Put this back in the oven without the lid on to help get a little bit more browning on the top of the chicken and cook it the rest of the way through. To serve alongside our chicken and vegetables, I'm gonna cut up some bread. That's what I'm gonna spread the roasted garlic onto. All right, I'm gonna toast these off. Okay, the chicken has been in the oven for about 15 minutes. Let's check to see if it's done. Okay, I'm gonna check the temperature. Um, I really like to use a digital thermometer, but if you don't have one, you're looking for the legs to be kind of loose and able to be pulled away from the body of the chicken and you want your juices to run clear. But I'm looking for about 165. And we are there. Okay, so I'm gonna take a look at these vegetables. They all look really nice and tender and roasty. I'm gonna let the chicken rest for about 15 minutes before I carve it. Meanwhile, I'm gonna put this Dutch oven back in the oven and let this caramelize a little bit more. I pulled the garlic out of the Dutch oven to go ahead and make my garlic toast to serve alongside the chicken. So the garlic is so soft, it's soft enough just to squeeze out. I'm able just to spread it on here like butter. So I'm just using this offset spatula to spread it around on the toast. I'm gonna to top this with a little olive oil and flaky salt and serve it alongside the chicken to soak up all the juices. Our vegetables are nice and roasted. They started to get a little more caramelized. So I'm gonna transfer the vegetables to my platter here to make a nice bed. These vegetables are so aromatic. I have kind of a sweet anise smell of the fennel and the potatoes look amazing. They're nice and tender. The herbs have really infused all the way through the dish. And now it's time to carve the chicken. I like to carve chicken by starting with the leg and you should be able to pop the joint and really just tear it away. Then I'm gonna cut this into thigh and drumstick. Again, I'm just kind of looking where the joints meet. Okay, and now I'm going to remove the wings. And you could really feel this chicken is so moist and tender that it's really just coming apart as I carve it, which is super ideal. Okay, and now we're going in for the breast. Um, as you remember, we removed the wishbone, so this should be really easy. I can just cut all the way straight down. So I'm just feeling for that breastbone and then slicing down and then following the shape. This is definitely worth saving. This would be great for making stock, so don't throw away your chicken carcass. Definitely save it for later. And now I'm just gonna slice the breast. Brown skin looks amazing. All right, here's our chicken. We have our roast chicken with these beautiful vegetables. I'm going to finish this dish with a little lemon juice, which just helps to cut through the richness of this dish. And I have my fennel fronds that I saved from earlier, which are just gonna give a nice kind of bright freshness on top. And that's my one pot roast chicken with vegetables. I'm gonna get some of these vegetables. Definitely want a potato or two. I'm gonna go for the breast. All right, it's time to take a bite. Y'all. It's so good. The flavor of the chicken is amazing. It's, the skin is not crispy, but it is nicely browned. It's extremely flavorful with that spice rub on there. And the vegetables are so tender, have a wonderful fragrance from all the aromatics that we're cooking alongside in the pot. The, the enamel cast iron Dutch oven really cooked everything so evenly. Everything is like perfectly cooked and delicious. Don't forget to serve this garlic toast alongside with the chicken. It's really great for softening up all of those amazing juices. This dish is such a wonderful meal to serve to friends and family for a dinner party. You can do most of the prep in advance. You can have it roasted in the oven when your guests arrive. The aroma is amazing, and it's actually really quick to get on the table once everyone's there. I hope this recipe makes it from our kitchen to yours. I'm Rhoda Boone from Made In, and check out the recipe in the description below, and I'll see you next time.